Hi everyone and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. I'm Miss Estrick and I'm here to help you improve your biology knowledge, your study skills and help you to get the grades you deserve. In this video we're going to do something slightly different as you can see from where I am. We are actually going to be doing an experiment and linking it to some application questions. So one of the key topics that is coming up on the exams 2022 is homeostasis and part of that is controlling your heart rate and blood pressure. So looking at the parasympathetic and sympathetic nerves and the pressure or barrier receptors. So what I have done is an experiment on myself using this amazing little blood pressure kit. And I'm gonna show you my experiment, my results, and link it to an application and critical analysis exam style question. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's have a look at this exam question together then. So it says that a student was investigating the effect that time of day had on blood pressure. So that's what they're investigating. They recorded their own blood pressure at six different times of the day for 30 consecutive days. So they have done quite a few repeats. The table shows the mean, so they've done their repeats, taken a mean, um, and it's a mean for systolic and diastolic pressure. And they've also got the standard deviations as well. So we can see from the results, we've got the time of day, 9, 11, and then 1 p.m., 3 p.m., 5 p.m., and 7 p.m. We've got all of the mean blood pressures for the mean systolic pressure and the mean diastolic, and we have the standard deviations on there as well. So here's the blood pressure monitor I'm gonna be using. And thank you very much to Check Me for sending this through to me so I could use it for this video. If you are after some sort of device like this to measure your own blood pressure for experiments or just for general health, then make sure you go to checkme.com, which I'll link in the description below. Okay, so let me show you how you would approach these questions. So for the first one, calculate the maximum percentage change in the systolic blood pressure from nine to seven. The first thing we need to do is work out what is the raw change between the two biggest differences. And that was 115 at 11 a.m. and 98 at 5 p.m. And then we divide that by our original, which is 115. So that gives us a difference of 17. Divide that by 15, and because it's percentage times 100. So that gives us 14.8% for the first question. Then we have to describe how the systolic pressure changes over the period shown in the table. So for this one, three marks. The first thing we'd be saying is there are small changes in the systolic blood pressure throughout the day. And then we need to consider the standard deviation. So the only change that is significant is at 11 a.m. Because even when we minus the 2.2 standard deviation, it's still a larger mean than all of the others. And that would be your third mark, the fact that the standard deviations overlap at all of the other times. Question three. So explain how the nervous system controls these changes in blood pressure during the day. So any changes in blood pressure is detected by the pressure receptors in the carotid artery. That would be our first mark. If the blood pressure increases, that would then send more impulses to the medulla oblongata. And then there'll be more impulses sent from there via the parasympathetic nervous system to the SAN. And that will cause the SAN to release waves of depolarization less frequently. And that will then reduce the heart rate and therefore bring down the blood pressure. The last question is one of these critical analysis style questions to do with, do you agree with the conclusion? So a student concluded that the time of day causes changes in blood pressure and you're told to use all of the information in your answer. So we need to look at the data and the method. So the first mark would be that whilst the means did vary, there's no significant difference between any of the diastolic pressures when you take into account the standard deviations because they all overlap. Then if we talk about the systolic pressure, it links to what we already said earlier in the question, but there is only a significant difference at 11 a.m. for systolic pressure. However, if we now think about the method, there is only one person that has been tested and that is not representative of the whole population. So we were told that they did this experiment on themselves 
And in this video, that was me, and that is not representative of the human population. We also don't know what they were doing on those 30 days. So we don't have any details on what they might have eaten or how much liquids they've drunk on those days. And both of those factors have an impact on blood pressure. So we don't know if the changes that we saw are definitely due to time of day or any other factor. So that's it. I hope you found this slightly different video helpful with the actual exam question and me doing the experiment. As we're getting closer and closer to exams, practicing the questions, particularly application and critical analysis is key. So that's why I wanted to try something a bit different and look out for some more of these coming up. If you have found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up.